Obviously, we've been waiting for a new platform from Arctic Cat for a long time, and finally, we have the Catalyst. But there's another reason that this sled is so important. The Catalyst and the new 858 motor represent the first time in nearly two decades Arctic Cat was able to develop both an engine and a chassis together. And this is important because it's the absolute best way to develop a sled. But I wanted to go deeper into the development of the motor and find out how it came together, what makes it special, and why developing it alongside the Catalyst chassis was such a huge benefit. So I got on a Zoom call with all the big minds at Articat all at once to get my questions answered. When we talk about how, you know, engines in the past and how they relate to the platform, I'll go back in time a little bit, but when we did the Pro Cross chassis, it was using engines that already existed. You know, it, was, it wasn't just taking, you know, designing a new platform with a new engine in mind. It was taking the engines that we currently had and, it, and putting them into, this, into the Pro Cross, which replaced the old Twin Spark. So when the Catalyst platform started, it was, wow, we get an opportunity here where we can actually create a new platform along with a new engine. Meetings, PowerPoints, going back as far as middle of the last decade, right? 2015, 17, going, going back that far in a long time. We've looked at stand-up engines. We've looked at, you know, everything. We've put stand-up engines into chassis, just kind of rough models of what they look like. Everything has kind of come back to that laid on engine design, getting everything packaged, you know, as far down, as far back as possible. So really it was making an engine first that really works really, really well with the chassis. We also took into factor internal and consumer feedback on our current engines, on what people liked and what people didn't like about our current engines. It's no secret, some people don't like the way our 800 runs down at low speed. And that was a big one we wanted to change with the 858. So that was a huge thing we worked on. It was the overall refinement of this engine package to be kind of one of our most refined engines to date. This is kind of one of the rare opportunities when we're able to really design an engine and a chassis kind of together, right, in conjunction with each other. So typically you're stuffing an existing engine into, you know, a new chassis or vice versa. So it was pretty unique and a pretty awesome opportunity to be able to design them, you know, purpose-built engine chassis combination for each other. Knowing the 858 engine was designed right alongside the Catalyst chassis, it's reasonable to wonder why we saw the 600 released first. Now, the 600 was always going to end up in a Catalyst chassis eventually, but there's more to the story about why the 600 was released before the 858. When there was some issues of actually being able to get the parts, it was like, well, we gotta make a decision. We either hold off on releasing the new Catalyst or we bring the 600 up because the 600 was also expected to be in the Catalyst platform. Uh, if you're going to make a big splash in the market, that's that's what you want to do is you want to do the 858 first and then follow it up with the 600. But we knew how important it was to get this Catalyst platform into the market, not sacrificing anything. The decision was made to pull the 600 up and then to keep the 858 going. The 858 was the direction you know it was what we designed this chassis around and when push came to shove and we were looking at you know pushing off the catalyst another year or coming up with a different plan we put the 600 in there what we basically did is we positioned the 600 in there we had to consider how the 600 would mount in there without uh, making any changes to the case which influenced some of the the early on case designs of the 858 for engine mounting. So we positioned that and then we said, okay, now in the 858 position, where do those holes have to exist on that case? The 858 was the ideal perfect scenario. Deciding what displacement an engine is gonna be is so much more than just picking a number. There are countless factors that go into figuring out what the best choice is. And oftentimes, these factors all affect each other, complicating things further. It's working within our package to meet all the goals for the platform, but also still getting the performance that the consumer's gonna want. It's always a balancing act, right? You know, you have weight versus durability versus cost versus everything. We laid out 900s, we laid out even bigger engines. And really what, what happened is the weight really starts just, you get a point where the weight starts to skyrocket almost exponentially when you, when you get in bigger displacements like that. And that's just not something I wanted. It just doesn't work well with the chassis that we were laying out. A little bit extra 
power you're getting for that extra displacement, um, you're getting a lot more extra weight for that small increase in horsepower. If we went to, say, a 900 engine, we would have had to increase, we felt we're going to have to increase our crank and diameters, especially if people are going to start boosting engines in the aftermarket. Same thing with if we increase the bore. Now, at an 85 millimeter bore, we can keep the same cylinder pitch side to side as what our 800 is. Um, if we start to get a bigger bore, 88 millimeter bore, our transfer ports are going to have to get bigger as well to um, you know, accommodate that extra airflow, which means the whole engine is going to have to get wider. Um, which again is not going to work well for a chassis. Maintaining our bore size helps our efficiency, which helps fuel economy, which helps overall package weight. Really, we just kind of found that point and, you know, 858 cc's was really kind of where we felt our engine was at a point of kind of diminishing returns, you know, for that displacement versus horsepower. We did have a target in mind, you know, based on where 800 is at and the percent increase. You know, our goals were about 10% over the existing 800. Mounting the 858 engine as low as possible in the catalyst chassis to help lower the overall CG of the sled was a major focus for Arctic engineers. But there's so much more to why the catalyst chassis handles so well than just where the motor is positioned. In our prototypes of what the catalyst might be, we also found, you know, in weight reduction projects and in different um, manipulations of our chassis and to see where we wanted to go, we, we had we built a lightweight sled up and we need to minimize these clearances. We need to get this as low in the chassis as we can. So, you know, we put the drive clutch on there in CAD and we said, okay, well, we know the drive clutch needs X amount of distance between the belly pan and, and that. So that determines where it can be. We decided, okay, now the engine mounting, we cast it in bosses right to the case to directly bolt the engine mount right to the case. Um, this allows the packaging for the lower frame to be unique and, and low profile. Took the specs of what Jeremy's team came up with and designed from the inside out. The A58 has quite a bit of interesting technology built into it, and one of the most interesting is the servo-driven exhaust valves. Valve height change is essentially controls the airflow through the, the engine. So we've increased the valve height change by 250 percent you can imagine it has a much greater control over the airflow through the engine on a scale of magnitude so it really allows us to manipulate how we want that engine to flow and run um, so the, the best number we have is uh, 250 percent increase in port height change for the for the exhaust valve system another benefit of this valve architecture is keeping that valve close to the piston surface throughout its uh, range of motion and keeping that close there makes it more uh, a more effective timing edge. And the, the more effective that timing edge is, the more, you know, that controls the airflow better, which then we can make higher efficiency, lower emissions, better run quality. This valve architecture opens us up to a large future. We have a lot of potential in this design. We have a new ECU with this engine. So this will be kind of just the starting point of a big future. Obviously, Articat didn't just design an incredible chassis and then say, hey, we better get a motor to throw in this thing. These components were designed for each other. And I can't wait to get my hands on an 858 Catalyst to see just how awesome this combination really is.